Imagine this. You finished an elaborate project in your company. You were even praised for it. But you felt it was not good enough. Or you cleaned up your entire house. And now, in less than an hour again, you are cleaning up most of the places all over again. You locked your car, walked for a few paces, you've gone back to check whether the car is locked or not. It happens not just once, but twice, thrice, four times. If any of these situations sounds familiar to you, then welcome to this workshop. On this workshop will be about perfectionism. I'm Dr. Tarik Sani. I'm a CBT practitioner. I won't give any more elaborate introduction because I'm sure that the nice folks at HasGeek have put a link in the description on this page somewhere, which has got a yard long list and more. Dealing with perfectionism. What will the workshop entail? Of course, we'll understand what is perfectionism. Unhelpful thoughts of perfectionism, that is the thoughts which are there within the perfectionism uh, cycle. What keeps perfectionism going? And we'll finally learn how do we go about changing perfectionism. Jumping right into what is perfectionism? The wordy definition of perfectionism is Perfectionism is a trait, a personality trait characterized by a person's striving for flawlessness and setting impossibly high performance standards accompanied by critical self-evaluations and concerns regarding others' evaluation and basing your self-worth on that. If you were to break this down, it would be something like relentless striving for extremely high standards judging your self-worth based on ability to strive and achieve, experiencing negative consequences of do doing these uh, two things, yet continuing. But you may say that generally it is good to have high standards and goals. I agree. It is good to strive for excellence but not for perfection. And perfectionism is a bad thing because it is not contextual, whereas excellence is always contextual. That is, if you want to be the best, it is in context of something. So that, this is the vital difference between perfectionism and excellence. So perfectionism is bad because if I try to be perfectionist, if I try to be flawless, then I have no free time. No achievement is ever enough. I blame myself if things aren't done, just try. I can't stand it when other people don't do the things my way. So this cuts both ways. It is not just I'm self-critical, I'll be critical of other people as well. I have to go over my work many times until it is acceptable to me. And many times it is never acceptable, but then there is a deadline. I have to do more and more in order to feel accepted by others. I'm so afraid of failing that I never get started. So paradoxically, wanting to be perfect, you end up procrastinating. When are you a perfectionist? It is not always that all people are perfectionists. All perfectionists are not uh, perfectionists in every area of, uh, of their lives. So some of the areas where people are perfectionists, it can be a combination of uh, one, uh, a few or just one for you. Just take a note as to what are you perfectionist about? When is it that? In work, studies, Housework and close relationships. This can get very sticky if uh, you get, get perfectionism into uh, relationships because humans, as we know, are not perfect. 
organizing and ordering things eating weight and shape of your body grooming and personal hygiene sports and health and fitness so these are some of the areas which you may encounter perfectionist behavior and most people do not have perfectionist behavior in all in all these areas it is a combination of one or two of these things and then there are perfectionist behaviors associated that is how do you uh, behave in a perfectionist manner so not every perfectionist behaves the same how do you behave are you a perfectionist when it comes to decision making that everything should be uh, perfect do you overcompensate by working much more than what is required for the task are you the reassurance seeking kind of perfectionist that you keep asking people is this okay then there is something which can be inane but uh, for those who suffer it can get bad excessive list making holding that at at some future point i will need this particular thing so i will just hold then you are a perfectionist and you procrastinate and indulge in avoidance you have a problem with delegating your task thus failure to delegate not knowing when to stop and finally attempts to change the people around you so this is these are the some of the perfectionist behaviors that we indulge in but why have we become perfectionist this is a this is a really complex conundrum but i will try to break it into a few four or five points and with uh, because changing the root of perfectionism is not really important but will nonetheless for sake of completion look into it direct learning that is reward and positive uh, reinforcement when you were good when you excelled you were rewarded a converse direct learning punishment and lack of positive uh, reinforcement when you were even slightly slack so if you did not get that 99.99 percentile you were not good enough and you were always criticized so punishment and lack of positive reinforcement and indirect mod uh, learning modeling if your parents were workaholic if your uh, elder sibling is uh, overachieving then chances are that you will also end up with perfectionism and finally there is some amount of genetic makeup or temperament as we call that these people are born with that perfectionism trait but even if you are born with that trait it can be changed and all perfectionists they have certain rules which they apply to their behavior so what are these rules let us look into that that setting even more demanding standards we will look in, in detail with each one of them but setting even more demanding standards you achieve something but that particular achievement is not good enough you set higher standard so the relentless high standards of achievement all or nothing thinking or it this is also known as black and white thinking like uh, if you are not 100% good then you are absolutely bad so this is all or nothing thinking perfectionists they often indulge in all or nothing or black and white thinking it is a type of cognitive distortion fear of failure you fear failure so much that you want to make sure that there are no chances of you failing shoulds and musts i must be the number one always i must come first in the entire college so these are kind of absolute demands so that is one of the perfectionist rules 
constant checking, checking multiple times whether a particular task has been done well enough or not. This can be linked to fear of failures or all or nothing thinking, but we do take constant checking as a separate uh, point here because when it comes to changing this behavior, we need a slightly different approach. Of course, there is self-control that you just can't control yourself, checking yourself again and again and again. What keeps perfectionism going? Like perfectionism is not an isolated event. It is kind of a vicious cycle. So first there are high standards and self-criticism coupled with unhelpful thinking styles. And then there are perfectionism behaviors. So we have high standards. We self-criticize ourselves. We self-criticize because we have got unhelpful thinking styles. And then we do perfectionism behavior. There may be a reward or reinforcement at the end, depending on what the outcome is. The reward can be that you did manage to get the job done properly. How do unrelenting high standard keeps the perfectionism going? Not achieving the standard you set. That is, the standards were so high that they couldn't be achieved. Achieving the standards, but at a cost. In some cases, the standards is, is achieved, but only at a great personal cost. So that is not good enough. It should come easy. Finally, achieving the standard and then resetting it. Because even if the high standard has been achieved, most perfectionists do not feel happy about it. So I dieted, I lost 7 kgs in a month, but that is not good enough. I should have lost 12 kgs. So you reset the standards. All this goes in a kind of cycle. And uh, here I would like to show the cycle in kind of a flow chart. So what happens is... There is self-worth overly dependent on pursuit and achievement of unrelenting standards. Thus, the underlying rules and assumptions, the shoulds, the musts, the can'ts, they are activated. Then based on that, you set an unrelenting standard. Perfectionism behaviors kick in, excessive checking, going over uh, things again and again, avoidance, procrastination. This is coupled with perfectionist thinking. Evaluate performance all or none as a child. Look out for mistakes and signs of failures. It either uh, this leads to either failing to meet standards, in which case there is self criticism, or you meet standards but decide that the original standards were not good enough. There are negative consequences like social isolation. Time consuming, uh, it is time consuming, low mood, anxiety, and so on. Also, there are positive consequences. That is, it simplifies life. But at this point, you either reset the standards to be even higher and go back to unrelenting standards, or you, from self criticism, you base your self worth onto your uh, achievements. Thus, the procrastination keeps going on and on in a cycle. Linked somewhere on this page must be a blank procrastination cycle, uh, a PDF which you can download and print so that you can put in your perfectionism behavior into a cycle for better understanding. And uh, thus having a better understanding will allow you to change the uh, perfectionism uh, in a better way. Did I say procrastination? It has to be perfection. Whatever it is. Doesn't matter. I am not a perfectionist. Changing perfectionism. What will changing perfectionism involve? This is the biggest part of it. Relaxing your unrelenting high standards 
and thinking in shades of gray, not black and white or all or none. Be prepared to try new things. Of course, it will require a commitment of time and effort. But first thing that you have to decide is, are you ready for change? Because this is going to be something that you're going to do for quite some time. It will take an effort. It will involve discomfort. Are you ready for change? How do you find that? Do a cost benefit analysis kind of a thing or uh, what we call in CBT as the change process balance sheet. List the negative consequences of pursuing unrelenting high standards. List the positive consequences of pursuing unrelenting high standards and perfection. List the personal benefits that you expect if you loosen your unrelenting high standards. And list the personal costs that you expect if you loosen your unrelenting high standards. You can do this in a quadrant kind of uh, uh, sheet and uh, see whether you are really ready for change. And ideally you should be because it is going to be beneficial for you in the long run. And after which you can start with setting the goals for change. Choose a general goal area because right in the beginning, we saw that not everybody is a perfectionist, a perfectionist in all areas of life. Choose a general goal area to work on first. Then you need to adjust your unrelenting high standards. I will tell you how to do all that. Identify the perfectionism behavior you wish to work upon. Identify a specific goal towards reducing this perfectionist behavior and set a time frame. So uh, those of you who uh, know may recognize that this is essentially we are trying to set a smart goal here. And if you don't, don't bother with, with it. So choose a general area, adjusting your unrelenting high standards, identify the perfectionism behavior Identify a specific goal towards reducing the perfectionism behavior. Set a time frame. If you have filled out the, perf uh, the perfectionism cycle uh, sheet, this is where it will be very useful. And some coping tips before you begin is practice not being perfect. This, is, this will invoke a certain amount of discomfort. Try to tolerate this discomfort. Give yourself explicit permission to make mistakes because you do make mistakes just that you are not allowing yourself to make mistakes give yourself permission be a bit self-compassionate remind yourself of the unhelpful consequences that we have seen of perfectionism behavior and what you are experiencing and why you want it learn to laugh a sense of humor Specifically, a self-deprecating sense of humor, that is, the ability to laugh at yourself will go a long way in helping you curb perfectionism. Finally, reward yourself off. These are some of the coping tips which will help you go on to the next step. So you have now you have a goal, you have some tips. Let us see how you can go stepwise into changing perfections. We use what is known as a step ladder method. You build a step ladder. You have your goal. You break it into steps. Completing a step, for each step, you set a date, place, and time. Expect some anxiety to be there, but persist with that step. Use your skills to complete that particular step of the step ladder. Climb towards your goal one step at a time. Don't try to do all at once. That is one of the tendencies of perfectionists. They, they want to do everything at once. If needed, do the same thing over and over again till you are satisfied with that particular step. Acknowledge the steps you have made. 
there may be setbacks. Expect them rather and find what caused the setback and why did you resort back to your perfectionist behavior. Because being a perfectionist, you avoid a certain discomfort or you reinforce a certain thinking pattern. So if you can identify at this uh, when there are setbacks or setbacks, what happened, then it will be useful. How to troubleshoot uh, step backs? Use a thought diary to challenge unhelpful thought. So a thought diary is what you record your thoughts as to what kind of thoughts I was having, what possible outcome I was predicting, and what really happened. Set a time and date to try the step again. Create an in-between step if needed. Repeat the previous step if needed. If this is not enough, then set up behavioral experiment. So identify your belief. What are the thoughts that you are having? That is, you believe that certain thing will happen. Then go out, test. Does that really happen? Conduct the experiment that is, that is going out and testing, does that really happen? And develop a balanced belief. We'll look for most of the major beliefs, how this can be achieved one by one. But this, these are the broad, broad outline steps. You may be thinking that all this is very easily said, but there is a certain scientific basis to it. Uh, uh, at this point, I would like to digress a bit and tell a bit of uh, underlying CBT models which are there or underlying CBT uh, logic which is there. So there is a thinking feeling connection in CBT that is thoughts influence feelings and behavior and feelings that is the emotions are not thoughts. One particular model you will come across often is the ABC DEF model. It depends on what is known as the cognitive triad. The cognitive triad consists of three areas which every human has. The think, feel and behave. You may have an idea as to how these things are interlinked. And uh, many people think, uh, presume that it is the thinking which will influence behavior or the feeling which will influence behavior and thinking. But the fact is that these th three things are linked by direction. So if we change one of these, if we change thinking, then it will influence behavior and feelings. If we change behavior, then it will influence thinking and feeling. So CBT relies on changing thinking if thinking, uh, changing the thinking doesn't work, then we rely on changing behavior. What from, follows from this is the ABC model, which says that there is, in any situation, there is an activating event or trigger, and there, there are, thus there are consequences. So, in this case example, I have taken that the activating event is scoring 80% at an assignment. Jack feels proud and happy. But Jill, on the other hand, is feeling angry. Now, if it was true that the activating event or trigger is a direct cause for the consequence, then both Jack and Jill would have had the same emotional and behavioral consequences. Obviously, that did not happen and that doesn't happen. So what is there in between A and C? What is the B here? The B is what we call as beliefs or deeply ingrained thoughts. Upon getting 80%, Jack thought and he had a belief that 80% is a great thing. Thus, it is because of this belief that 
Jack had the consequence of feeling happy and proud. Whereas Jill thought, and Jill had a belief that I am such an idiot for getting 80%. And thus the consequence was anger. Based on this, we will go on to adjusting your own unhelpful rules and assumptions which we saw in the first part of this workshop. And we will go through each one of them at a time, going through all the steps that are needed and see how it can be worked. Adjusting the unhelpful rules and assumptions, what are the steps? I'll broadly go over the steps first. First and foremost, identify the unhelpful rule or assumption. Identify where it is coming from, how it developed. This is good to have thing, but not a necessary thing. Question, is it realistic or reasonable to have or even achievable to have this rule or assumption? Recognize the negative consequences of holding on to this rule. Identify a more helpful rule, which is an alternate to our unrealistic plan. How you would put that new rule into practice. Now let us see with one at a time each of these rules which we have spoken about, like fear of failure. Let's start with fear of failure. What is this rule? What can it? Uh, how uh, can it uh, come? I must do things perfectly. I must not fail. I can't have others think poorly of me. If I try, then I will only fail. If I put my work out there, then others will think badly of me. Where did this come from? Probably messages from families and peers growing up or while working. Past experiences with failure. Of course, successful people are admired. So these may be a probable causes where your fear of failure and consequent perfectionism comes from. How is this unreasonable, unrealistic and unfair? It is unreasonable, unrealistic and unfair because it is impossible to be absolutely perfect always. You are going to be good at some things and not so good at other things. You are a complex amalgamation of good skills and bad skills and neutral skills. Making some mistakes is normal. Everyone makes mistakes. Nobody likes to make mistakes. But if you are human, you are likely to make a mistake. You can't control what others are going to think of you. If you don't try, you will never no, and that is how sticking to fear of failure is unreasonable, unrealistic, and unfair. What are the negative consequences of sticking to fear of failure? You don't even try. Thus, you put off important things, or you, on the other hand, if you do try, you overwork. Thus, you have no free time for your own self and this is typically a recipe for disaster that is burnout what is an alternate more helpful thought not being perfect doesn't mean failure trying my best is reasonable in some areas i will do well in other areas, I will do less well. It is okay to do things well rather than perfectly. Again, I would like to emphasize that we are not saying don't be excellent or don't pursue excellence. 
pursuing excellence versus perfectionism are two opposite ends excellence is knowing what is the required high standard in a given context and striving to achieve that particular high standards so if it is a gully cricket match you won't be playing as if you are playing a test match so i get you are a professional cricketer but then why would you play a gully cricket in that case but okay it is okay to do things perfectly how to practice this new rule remind yourself repeatedly it is not possible to be perfect always ask for criticism and tolerate criticism practice some relaxation exercise a bit of mindfulness here will help deliberately make small mistakes and see what happens does the sky really fall no it doesn't so this is how you can set up small behavioral experiment if you have a fear of fail going on to the next demands that it should must all of them what's that i must make sure my house is always spotlessly clean i must always complete my work quickly or my boss will think that i am incompetent if i eat anything at all before noon it's the proof that i have no will power that is probably this person was right i can't eat any chocolate or i might lose all control and binge where did this come from my mom always made me keep my bedroom spotlessly clean guys don't go and blame your parents for everything right we were never allowed any chocolate so when i did get some i would eat it all and secretly quickly how is this unreasonable unrealistic unfair some of the demands i impose on myself are impossible to achieve i see things as black and white whereas other people see in shades of gray what are the negative consequences of these demands we try to achieve the impossible give up if we are not 100% in control put self under tremendous stress to get a perfect result we are extremely extremely self critical what is a more helpful alternate thought it is good to try hard but be adaptable and reasonable if i don't achieve something completely it is not the end of the world and like i have been emphasizing again and again pursuit of excellence is not perfectionism how to practice this new rule think in steps and grades of achievement that is why i wanted you to make a step ladder when you are uh, doing any goal so that you don't think in all or nothing terms think in steps and grades of achievement set realistic good enough standards which are good enough for the given context take opinion from varied sources consider shades of gray rather than just black and white and and don't think in terms of all or nothing there can be grades of success on to the next belief constant checking what is that i have to weigh myself every day to make sure my weight hasn't gone up i must check my reports over and over to make sure there are no errors 
I have to go over conversations in my mind to make sure I didn't say anything wrong. I have to look in the mirror every time I pass one to make sure my makeup and hair are okay. Where did this come from? My parents were anxious, checking their watches so they wouldn't be late, making sure the gas stove was turned off, checking the front door was locked and so on. Or it could be something like a, a personal experience. I once went out with my mask, mascara all smeared and everyone laughed at me and I felt like such a fool, an embarrassment. So, but how is this unreasonable, unrealistic and unfair? You can't control everything. Checking things that have already happened doesn't change the past. However much you check, there might be an error that you will miss. What are the negative consequences of constant checking? Checking things over and over takes a lot of time. However much I check, I still feel anxious. What is an alternate, more helpful thought? It is good to check that things are okay. But checking once or maybe even twice should be enough. It is not the end of the world if something is not 100% right. How to practice this move? Practice reducing my checking, make a deal with myself to check my face, the store, my report only once or twice. So these are the behavioral instruments that you can set. Self-control, what's that? How does it come into play? I won't let myself relax because if I do, I may become lazy. I can never go out and have fun because I can't take time off from my studies. I won't let myself have a treat because I haven't worked hard enough. I won't eat bread because that way I know that I am strong. Where did this come from? My father was a workaholic and never took time off from me. I used to be overweight and I swore I would never let myself get like that again. How is it unreasonable, unrealistic and unfair? I have worked tremendously hard in order to let myself stop. It is silly to say that I don't deserve a treat. It is unreasonable to tell myself that I shouldn't relax. Eating a piece of bread doesn't really mean I am weak or strong. What are the negative consequences? I never get to have any fun. I'm always working, right? I never get to chill out. I'm always too hard on myself. What is an alternate, more helpful thought? If I work hard, I deserve to rest, even if I haven't finished all my tasks. You have to balance your life. It is okay to relax occasionally and it doesn't mean that I'm lazy or incompetent. Being in control is about making choices that are good for me, not being compulsive. Not being compulsive or perfectionist. How to practice this thing? Make sure I relax. Put a time limit on work. Remind myself that making healthy choices is a healthier way to control myself rather than, than being extremist. Eat that slice of chocolate bread or cake, whatever you want. 
simplicity, structure, and decor. What are the thoughts associated in this particular pattern? I must be certain of what will happen. I should be prepared for the worst always. I can't stand not knowing the outcome. If I take action, then something bad will happen. I'm better off not doing anything than risk it going bad. So these are the patterns, uh, uh, these are the thoughts which will come under the pattern of wanting simplicity, structure and control. Where did this come from? Growing up, feeling that the world is a dangerous place, maybe because we moved often and I had to be on guard in strange towns, or maybe more recently when I have taken action, it hasn't always worked out well. How is it unreasonable, unrealistic and unfair? You can't be sure about everything. You can only be prepared to a certain extent. You have to always take some risk. What are the negative consequences of wanting simplicity, structure and control? I'm always on guard. I never feel relaxed. I'm anxious and stressed out. The alternate thought here, prepare for a variety of possible consequences, but be open and flexible. Take calculated risk. How will you practice this new? Practice taking risk, doing something with an unknown outcome, just trying it out and let it flow what happens. Setting even more demanding standards. What are these kind of thoughts? I had a goal of dieting till I got to 55 kilos. But now I've got there, it doesn't seem hard enough and I need to push myself further. I had a goal of 90% in my test. And now that I got 90%, I need to get 95% next time. I got promoted last year, but I must get promoted again this. Where did this come from? I was brought up to be competitive with my brother. Nothing was ever, ever good enough for my parents. I went to school that pushed you to achieve more and more and more and more. This can be very true in Indian scenarios. How is it unreasonable? It is impossible to keep doing better forever. You will hit a plateau. You will hit a downturn. There can be bumps and turns. Making higher demands and resetting the bar, where will it end? If you don't put an end to it, if you don't strive in the context which is, it is needed, then you will definitely burn out. What are the negative consequences? Obviously, no achievement is ever satisfying. I push and push myself for no reward. I beat myself up often for not doing better. Of course, there has to be an alternate. And that is setting achievable, appropriate goals is healthy. Reaching a goal is a sign of success and deserves a pat on the back. You can set the next goal, but this particular achievement has to be celebrated as well. How to practice this new rule? Set goals, then don't move the goal posts. Give myself a pat on the back when I achieve my goal. So these were the various thought patterns or the cognitive distortions which are associated with perfectionism and how to dispute them, like how to overcome them. Dispute uh, is a very uh, specific uh, CBT word and how to overcome them how to set up experiments to try out the alternate ones. Once again, 
how do you put all of this together again? This is known as action planning. And that is what we do at the end of sessions within CBT. We plan for an action. Previously, this was called as homework. But due to the punitive nature of the word homework, it was later, we started calling it as action plan. Step one, identify the task or standard that you want to change. Step two, adjust the unhelpful rules and assumptions. Step three, put perfectionism in perspective. Step four, set an appropriate standard. Step five, carry out the practical strategies to reduce your perfectionism behaviors. And step six, challenge your perfectionist thinking. Reevaluate achieving and challenge the perfectionist mindset. If you keep doing the steps, that is what will happen. You will keep reevaluating, achieving, and challenge the perfectionist mindset. Lastly, Reflect and revise your plan as per the needs of the situation. Because not every plan you start out with will be perfect to begin with. You will have to learn to tolerate that as well. Because overcoming perfectionism is not going to be a perfectly smooth road. You will feel bumps and dips along the road. But if you are consistent, you will achieve excellence in your life and will be able to shed perfectionism. Thank you.